We often think that we should be somewhere better, but a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he's meant to, and we're gonna arrive where we're meant to be precisely when we're meant to. And if we don't like where we're at, remember that it's just a starting point. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses so you're not missing any of this content designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Now recently, quite frankly, I've been kind of overwhelmed and I'm just being pulled in a hundred different directions and a hundred different ways and I've had my stress management pretty under control for a while now, given everything that's on my plate. My anxiety symptoms haven't been too intense given uh, the circumstances and the weight of everything. However, one thing that really concerned me as I was getting back into school, as I was taking classes again, was my scattered thoughts. So I tend to have constant racing thoughts and I thought that's gonna be a real problem if I'm taking on all these other things and I'm having these thoughts racing while I'm trying to uh, learn, while I'm trying to focus in class or while I'm trying to absorb the material that I'm studying. And I promised I'd give you guys a quick update on the Magic Mind Supplement and how that was affecting my school and hand to heart, my friends, I swear. it. It has had an immensely, immensely positive effect on my focus. And I suddenly just have this inexplicable way to shelve those racing thoughts while I'm in class or while I'm reading, while I'm studying, while I'm trying to absorb that material. I can just kind of shelve the racing thoughts. Now, it's not a permanent solution. It's not something that is keeping those racing thoughts at bay all the time. I wish it did, unfortunately, but it is giving me a reprieve so that I can focus on things. So I can take a little bit uh, before class, so I can take a little bit before I study, and it's been immensely helpful in just being able to uh, tone that down, to tone down those racing thoughts. And it has actually been toning down the stress and anxiety symptoms even a little bit more, even though they were already pretty in check, it's been toning them down a little bit more. So it has been uh, really, really helpful in my academic career and being able to balance everything. So I just needed to update you before diving into this reaction. If you guys want to check it out yourself, you can go to magicmind.co slash mental Amanda for 20% off. I never, I never accept sponsored content for things I don't try myself and things I don't believe in. I just want to offer you guys things that will help you with your mental health journey. Without further ado, today we're going to do Hate Me by Blue October. I've done Blue October here on the channel, but I've never heard this song. So let's see what we got. I have to block out thoughts of you so I don't lose my head. They're crawling like a cockroach, leaving babies in my bed. Dropping little reels of tape to remind me that I'm alone. Playing movies in my head that make a porno feel like home. There's a burning in my pride and a nervous bleeding in my brain. An ounce of peace is all I want for you. Will you never call again? And will you never say that you loved me just to put it in my face? And will you never try to reach me? It is I that wants to hate me today. I will rewind here a little bit so we can kind of go into that chorus, but. <laughs> That cockroach having babies in the bed is, is a visual that I never asked for, but it's certainly a valid description because they're crude and they're relentless and they can seem very difficult to exterminate. And it's kind of interesting because we were talking about these, these um, thoughts, these racing thoughts or these intruding thoughts, but the reels of tape is a better depiction for me just because uh, intrusive thoughts can be these stuck tapes that carry a thousand limiting beliefs and we can carry these for years if not our entire lives we can carry these inside our heads and they isolate you from objective reality and they can be 
so vulgar, turning things that should be beautiful, that were beautiful, into acts of emptiness, hence the uh, porno feeling like home reference. But you, you want people to hate you because you don't know how to love yourself. Hate me today. It's one accomplishment that you helped me with The one thing that always tore us apart Is the one thing I won't touch again In my sick way I wanna thank you For holding my head up late at night While I was busy waging wars on myself You were trying to stop the fight You never doubted my warped opinions On things like suicidal hate You made me compliment myself When it was way too hard to take So I'll drive so far away that I never cross your mind and do whatever it takes in your heart to leave me behind me This person's struggling and doesn't see a way uh, out and, under, um, and understands why their habits, their uh, darkness might not be desirable for others to be around and they're stuck in this rut of their own doing. And I can say that I've been there many, many times. Uh, and this is the span of time between seeing what your darkness does to other people and finally finding the light to fight it. And sometimes that light switch can be very hard to find when you're just, you know, feeling around in the dark, but it is there. And with a sad heart, I say bye to you and wave. Kicking shadows on the street for every mistake that I had made. And like a baby boy, I never was a man. Till I saw your blue eyes cry. I hate when you have addiction or you have that breakdown and then you have the revelation of what you've done, what that's done to other people and how much that's hurt people, you know? And this person seems to struggle with addiction or something, a war on themselves, and their loved one was trying to help, was just loving them through all of this darkness and all of these demons. but. What do we do when that happens? We feel so unworthy that we drive far away. We run from the people we need most because we don't want to hurt them instead of allowing them to help us and accepting, yeah, this, this is hurting this person, but you know what's gonna hurt that person more is if you lose your battle. And I think that the, the messaging 
uh, the answering machine, the message, carrying that message around with him and then leaving it at the grave was, was a very strong uh, visual. But our shadows have left us with a self-loathing and a feeling of weakness of not because we're not able to easily overcome things. You can't overcome them, just not easily overcome them. That makes us feel weak. Our shadow is telling us that that makes us weak. And, um, and if we can't easily overcome what we're up against, then we're not worthy, then other people are too good for us, um, that we shouldn't be burdening them. So we assume everyone else should hate us because we hate ourselves, because we're seeing uh, the world, we're seeing ourselves through this lens that the shadow has put all over our eyes. We think that everyone else sees the same way. But let me tell you, my friends, that's not true. People don't see the same way you do. That's your subjective uh, reality. It's not objective reality. It's your subjective reality. It's just how you're seeing things. And that's not to say that your perception isn't valid, but when you can realize, okay, yes, I have these challenges. Everybody has challenges. Everybody has darkness. Everybody has skeletons in their closet. Everybody has things that they face that aren't easy. But the only thing that we can really do is band together. And we frequently talk about how you can't love other people unless you love yourself. It's because if you don't love yourself, you push other people away and you test them and you you just can't seem to make that connection. So you shouldn't hate yourself for the, the cracks in the sidewalk, for the stumbles, for the mistakes, for the darkness, for things that in many cases were out of your control. You shouldn't hate yourself and if someone else hates you then that's their choice but don't don't put that on them don't put them in a position where they can't love you and be there for you and support you because it's not too much for our loved ones it's going to be too much for our loved ones as i said if we lose our battle so i'm sending all of my love i know all of your love is coming back and i think that hate is really just a it's it's just a yearning for love, you know? I think that we just yearn for love and when we get to that point, it's that we don't know how to tap into it, you know? I think that the opposite of love is apathy, so I don't think hate is the exact opposite of love, but I do think that it's it's a matter of we're not tapping into uh, that energy where we, we might not be able to find it. So keep, keep feeling around for that light switch. I promise it's there and I promise this community will do everything that we can to help you because we love you and we don't want to see your light go out. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, share it. Somebody might really need the message today. I love you guys so, so, so much. Mwah.